Um, first of all, I was going to say, I'm a native Arlingtonian. I was born here, so you can imagine my surprise that one day I'd stand up here and be able to, uh, to even be myself and, and talk uh, for, for a couple minutes, actually. But one thing I want to say, I'm honored to be in a room that has Chris McLaughlin and Rhonda Butner and Daniel Hayes and the people who actually have been leading in Arlington for so many years, and many others in this room, I just was going to say, you've made this community what I think it is today, the most welcoming and LGBT hospitable leadership in the nation. And so in that sense, I'm rewarded by being in the company of giants and uh, humbled to be among my uh, co-honorees tonight, in fact. But I want to tell you one little story because um, it'll remind you where we are today in 2017. Fifty years ago, this kid, who was at Yorktown High School in the 1960s, decided all of a sudden that I had to act on those feelings I had. And there was no place for a 16, 17-year-old at the time to turn, right? There was no place, there was no peat flag. In my, in my near term, in my future. And uh, I did know one name. I knew two names, maybe. Frank Hammond and the Mattachine Society, of all things. I knew those existed. So I got the courage up to walk three blocks from my house and go to the shopping center and use a payphone, which, of course, nobody here probably... Well, everybody here knows what they are. But now the kids know what they are, so they have no idea. And I called the Mattachine Society to ask, what does a guy do when he knows he's gay at the age of 16 or 17? And there was no internet, there were no books, there was nothing I could do to even find somebody like me. So the amazing thing was, I felt like I think if you're an altar boy and you go to the Pope first, you know, in your hierarchy. So I called Frank Hammony, of all people, to ask what it was like to be gay. And mostly I wanted to know that, one, I wasn't alone. And I wanted to know how would I ever meet anybody like me. Because that's the feeling of never knowing there was other gay people in the, in the universe, in the known universe. But Frank was great. And the one thing I don't I remember, he didn't have much advice where a 16-year-old could go. He couldn't go to a bar. Um, Lambda Rising didn't even exist at the time. But he said... You might want to pick up, there's a brand new publication out called The Gay Blade that you might want to read, and I thought that might be the answer. The Blade was just coming out at the time, and you can imagine when I did get my hands on it how quickly I had to hide it. Um, but along the way, the thing that Journey told me over these 50 years is that I'm not alone. And the exciting thing is in 2017 that is that we're not alone and that the generations that follow us have the power to look to us as those people who can look out for their safety, for their future, and to find love above all. And Arlington is a special community because Arlington has given us that place that we felt safe, and we could be ourselves, and we could form groups like AGLA, and we could do things for this community that make us that special hometown. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm honored to be among giants and friends in a community that loves and welcomes us. Thank you. Oh, my husband. I forgot to introduce my husband of all things. And when you can say that, you know we've arrived. We have husbands now. So he is the love of my life and the one reason I'm excited to be here because I can take him with me and and. and uh, celebrate our relationship. So thank you again.